He's doing a work in your life, changing you and conforming you into His image. Not just so we can come to church and worship Him and praise Him, which is important. But so that we will go out into the homes, into the world, into the places, to our co-workers, to our friends, to our neighbors, and bring Jesus to them. Bring in the kingdom. We pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Your kingdom gets to where, his kingdom gets to where it needs to be through you. We have to take responsibility. Amen. Having committed ourselves to the Lord and to his service. Lord, use me, here I am. Send, I better say me. 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 We talked about God breaking our lives, conforming us into His image and His likeness, and removing that self-dependence uh, and, and pride in us and, and making us wholly dependent upon the Lord. And He does that for a purpose. And Ephesians chapter 2 tells us, that we are created in Christ Jesus, made a new creature in order to do good works. Not so we can come and sit and warm a pew and, you know, and that's, that's important, but there's more to it than that. Amen. So we want to ask ourselves today, and I want to talk about compassion. Everybody say compassion. compassion. What is compassion? And mercy, the fruit of of compassion and mercy. As God proves us, we begin to bear fruit. Amen? That couple come up to you and say, man, your, your message on really inspired me. And so I'm thinking, ah, what has God done in your life? What, what did you do as a result of hearing the Word of God? And he said, I went and I proved my peace for you. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad you did that, but Amen. But as God works on us, He produces fruit for other people. We can't be selfish. Amen. God's doing the work for His purpose, not just for us to feel good. Amen. But so that we can be a blessing to other people. To be His hands and His feet. And that's why we get broken before God, rid of our sin, understand our need for God and and, and getting, humbling ourselves, stripping us of all the self-dependence, making us wholly dependent on God, pliable, and, and, and so He can mold us into His image. Hebrews 5, 2 says, He is able, talking about the high priest, He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since He is also subject to weakness. Let me back up to this. Oh, there's broken people in Africa, and there's broken people in India, and there's broken people in all the third world countries. I want to share some information with you, some facts with you, and, and, and different things strike a chord with different people. Different things make different people tick. Uh, you get excited about something, you, you hear a need, and boy, oh, that just, boy, that excites you, and what can I do? And you hear something about something else, and it doesn't really move you. But there's something that God wants to reveal to you that will move you. Move you to compassion, and move you to do something to help alleviate the problem. Let me share with you some problems, some information in <laughs> Just so you'll know that we don't have to go to Africa and India. Nothing wrong with that. But there is more hurting and pain and suffering and needs in our neighborhood. Than and I'm just at random here. To, uh, and, and really compared to other parts of the state. Uh, Morris County. Uh, 59% of mothers are unmarried. 
compared to, which is greater than any adjacent counties or any eight or ten counties nearby. Mothers less than age 18, six percent, more than any neighboring county. Share why these are important. People, look, there's nearly a fourth of our population lives in Holland. Worst county. 23%. Camp County, 18. Titus County, 21. Population under age 18. Under age 18 that's in poverty. 32%. Children, 32% of children under age 18 are in poverty. Diabetes. There's some needs. There's some needs. 14% of adults suffer from diabetes. I say that because it's the next county, nine, Titus County, nine. Worst county is a needy county. Look at all these statistics. Of course, there's needs everywhere. Obesity in children. Sixteen percent of children in Morris County classified as obese. Eleven percent, the highest of any county in our region. Infant deaths per thousand live births. Morris County wins that too. By far. Venereal uh, diseases, sexually related diseases. This is a rate, not a percent, rate per 100,000. 7.4 in Morris County. 3% in Titus County. Compared to the state of uh, 4%. 4, the rate of 4. Victims of total violent crime arrest rate 367. The state 116. Assault arrest rate. Morris County 228. State of Texas 80. Rape arrest rate. Morris County 16 percent. State of Texas 8 percent. Camp 1 past 6. Morris County has the highest unemployment rate. 11%, 2017. Texas is 5%, 5.1%. Morris County has the highest percentage of single parent households in our uh, health region, which is, I think, uh, 20 something counties in Northeast Texas. Highest percentage of single parent households, 43%. Morris County has, is the third highest number of homeless children per thousand students enrolled. That's 19.2. The state is 10. Worst County is one of the highest violent index crime rates. I pointed that out. Worst County is fourth highest number in our, it's a 32 county uh, Northeast Texas health region. Fourth highest number of confirmed victims of child abuse and neglect. Eighteen and a half. The Texas rate is eight. Morris County has the highest rates of arrest for both alcohol and drug related offenses per 1,000 population. Highest, one of the highest rates of arrest for both alcohol and drug. In 2014, Morris County had the highest number of prescriptions 
per 100,000 population. 213,000, these are for uh, OPOH, these are for uh, <coughs> controlling depression and, and uh, situations. 213 state, the regional range is 158 per 100,000. Morris County is the second highest age-adjusted suicide rate in our 32 county region. 19.4 persons per 100,000. State is 11. Morris County has the highest, third highest rate of admissions to psychiatric facilities per 1,000 population. Five point six is the rate. The rest of the region is 4.4. Suicide rates, 2017 in Morris County, were published in 2017. Morris County, 19. It's the 25th of all 254 counties in Texas. Morris County is number 21. Of 19.66, state average is 13.47. There's been a 20% increase in suicide rates in rural areas of Texas between 2004 and 2013. I bore you. We can stick our head in the sand if we want to. Talk about more exciting things. As people are in pain, suffering. Yeah, it's a lot easier to go just come here something tickle our ears, make us laugh. We need to be aware of the situation around us. So thanks for your patience. 24% increase nationwide in suicide. Every day in Texas, eight deaths by suicide per day. Eight deaths every day in Texas due to suicide. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in ages 10 to 14. The eighth bracket 15 to 24. And the eighth bracket 25 to 34. The second leading cause of death is suicide in all the age brackets from age 10 to 34. The fourth leading cause of death in the bracket of 35 to 44 and 45. Suicide. The third leading cause of death in ages 10 through 14 is homicide. 8% on the average. People are depressed. I could go on and on. And I will have a later. Because I believe the Lord changes us, blesses us, equips us, and gives us his gifts and his grace and his mercy so that we can be vessels of the love for God. As, as Christians, we ought to be the most compassionate people in the world. We have such a wonderful opportunity in light of all of this information to show the love and the mercy of God and to bear the fruit of compassion because there are so many people in our neighborhood, our friends and our co-workers, that are hopeless, they're, they're hurting, and they're, they're helpless, and they need somebody like the, the four people that took the, the lame man, the, the paralytic man, to Jesus. You know, we think about the miracle, we say, wow, what a miracle! It wouldn't have happened without the four guys. God's looking for you to be one of the four ever having this needed to take people to Jesus, or to take Jesus to people. Happens both ways. Eyes are broken in our city, in our county. You work beside them, live with them. Such a tremendous need for compassion. But I'm concerned we've lost a great deal of our capacity to empathize and have compassion. 
There's not much connection to each other in our world unless you really work at it. There's very little face-to-face -face dialogue anymore. Such a fast-paced Facebook society of instant gratification. We live in a selfie mentality. And you may be asking yourself, I hope not, but why is, what's, what's the deal? I mean, why sharing this stuff? Well, we get so wrapped up in our self and we lose connection. When you lose connection, you can't have compassion without connection. Amen. But we live in a selfie mentality. Our lives are so busy, so distracted and overoccupied. And as a result, and I believe in our decline and our capacity to even have compassion. We're exposed to an enormous amount of hurt and pain and, and death and violence and movies and computer games and films that glorify death and violence. And the more gory they are, the more they sell, the more popular they are. God for me. We're exposed. This overexposure has desensitized us to a large degree to the pain that these people are having. We get numb and unsympathetic to the needs of others, not very affected by their hurts. Bombarded we are and overwhelmed with stories and, and our news feeds of, of mass murders, suicide, gang killings, terrorist killings, bombings, men and women, children slaughtered in Syria. A baby slushed down the toilet. Another one is found disposed in the trash dumpster. 3,000 babies killed by abortion every day in our country. 125,000 every day in the world. Babies ripped from their mother's womb, sliced up in pieces to be sold. We see these graphic pictures of, of war casualties in Afghanistan and, and Iraq and Syria. Right now, there's 57 wars going on in our world, of which some people, or at least people are being killed in. 57. We're inundated with these reports across our TVs and Facebook feeds. The gruesome murders, and we see that, and oh, it's followed by, oh, there's a gourmet chef, and there's my friend that cooked their favorite meal. Uh, oh, there's a mass shooting. Oh, there's the, the goofy face selfie. <laughs> and then there's the pet poodle. Uh, joined a, the uptown spa and, and lost five pounds. A uh, dad uh, murders his three-year-old daughter. Uh, hundreds of children gassed in Syria. How do we sort all that out? That's what we see every day, isn't it? And just flip through, Google whatever, whatever machine you're using it. And if we're not careful, we just get so desensitized and, and, and hardened. That's not God. God is a God of compassion. And I believe He wants us to identify with people's pains, with their feelings, with their suffering. He wants us to empathize and sympathize and, and be compassionate. We cannot afford to be callous and hard-hearted, filled with knowledge, but empty of mercy. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. And that's why God wants us broken before Him, dependent on Him, so that we can deal gently with those people. As the high, as the high priest is talked about. Who are going astray since he is also subject to weakness. Since we as high priest in the New Testament subject to weakness. And our capacity, I believe, for compassion is determined by our level of brokenness before God. Humility, this utter dependence on God. When we realize we need help. And except for the grace of God, there go I. I hope you don't choose to snub your nose in the air and look down on people. I have to guard, I have to be honest with you. My heart from being cynical. I, I, I see people that day in, day out with needs and wanting this and wanting that. And I've had to, I've had to, God help me. 
And the more we see all of this in this world we live in and all the news just bombarded church, our heart must be broken. And I, if our hearts are not broken, God help us. Because you'll never do much for anything unless you're broken over it. Unless you weep over it. You just take on Oh, we may share it and think, oh, I've done my duty. God wants us to do more. Have mercy on those who wait. For the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. With the measure you use it, it will be measured unto you. Being broken over the broken lives of other people. They're hurting, their their needs. Showing compassion. And mercy and taking action. What is compassion? It's having your bowels yearn. It is pain in you because of the pain in other people. God help us if there's something that doesn't move us inside to want to take action. Now, what moves me may not move you and, vice, and, and other people. But there's got to be something that moves you to compassion. Moved by compassion. And mercy is really the manifestation of that feeling. Compassion is the feeling. Mercy does something about it. By His mercy, He saved us. He's a great God, a God of compassion. And His mercy, by His mercy, He saved us. And God, we see, and open our eyes to see the needs of other people and give us compassion for those, but God, the mercy to do something about it. To feel sympathy for somebody. The, the, the prefix come means with or together. So we are hurting together. We are feeling the pain of others together. Our bowels are actually breathing, right, excuse me, in pain. Because we see the needs of other people. That's what Jesus did. Compassion is the doorway to miracles. Compassion leads to miracles. This feeling is good. But just the feeling is not enough. The Lord, you are compassionate and gracious. You're slow to anger and abounding in faithful love and truth. Thank God we have a high priest, amen, who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, who is touched with the, he's able to sympathize with our weakness. He was tempted in every manner, just like we are, but he didn't see it. Woo! He's our example, amen? amen. And so he's, he sympathizes. Jesus is sympathizing. That means that, that he has like feelings as we do. <coughs> Fellow Feelings is the word mean. He feels your pain. He feels your hurt. He feels your weakness. He experiences pain jointly. That's what it means to simply but die. Jointly feel the pain. I pray that we'll feel the pain of it. If you don't feel it, you're sure not going to try to alleviate it. Just click on Move on. If anyone has the world's goods and sees a fellow believer in need but withholds compassion, how does the love of God reside in him? Doesn't quit talking, go to preaching now. Oh, do you love Jesus? I suspect if I ask you, every hand in the house would go up. The measure of your love for Jesus is what you do to help other people. You don't love God any more than you love people. Come on. You say that you love God whom you haven't seen. Or you, you say you love God and you haven't seen, but you don't love your neighbor, then the Bible says, the Bible says your life. You cannot 
love God and have His love in your heart and not have compassion and love for other people. It's not enough. It, it's incongruent. It can't happen. You're deceived. According to the Bible. 1 John 3, 18. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Everybody say action. Ooh. Acts of kindness. Acts of mercy. As a result of our love for God, we have compassion on other people. And a result of that compassion, what can I do to help? Let's get him on up. On a, I'm coming here. Let's take him to Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we can't get in. That ain't going to stop us. I've got compassion for this man. Let's get on the roof. Let's turn the roof off and go inside. That's loving God. And that's loving people. Who is it in your life that you need to take to Jesus? We are his workmanship. Ephesians 2.10. Created in Christ Jesus to do Good works. We're not saved by good works, but I guarantee you, if you love God, life, your life will be filled with good works. Not to earn God's favor, not to earn the love of God, but to display the love of God in your life. Works is a natural outflow of the love of God. 2 Timothy 3.17, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished, complete, equipped for every good. Oh, I have to, what the Bible says, to stir one another to love and to good works. Think about stir. If God stirs us to love, guess what the natural result is? Good works. Don't say you love if you're not acting. Let us word not just love, not just in word, but in action. Titus 2, 4. Be zealous, the scripture says, of good works. It means to be eager. It means to be on fire, to pursue those works, to be enthusiastic and totally committed to doing some good deeds. Some of these needs, I believe, as we share them more over the next few weeks, is going to move you to do something. Now, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's ministries all over. There's homes for the, for the sex traffic uh, industry in Longview and, and nearby. There's, there's ministry to uh, unwed mothers uh, in uh, in Gilbert, there's there's ministries there just just need a little support, need a little help. So you don't necessarily have to start something to do something. You just have to get in with people that are already doing it. Don't have to reinvent the wheel. We got to do something. Everybody says do something. Oh, it's a song I'm singing. It. And I really believe this, folks. Why was he more fearful? Why was he more fearful? Where have you been to pray for somebody? Amen. Come on now. Where have you been to pray for somebody? Besides church? Mm -hmm. Where have you been? I mean, people went and visited. I mean, how you been to the hospital lately? Just went and prayed for people. He was broken, bruised, he was wounded. Why to heal a broken world? At communion last Sunday, he broke the bread, he gave the bread to the disciples, who gave the bread of life to those that were hungry, to those that were in need. People get him through you. There's many people out there. Jesus has given you, has given you the bread of life. What's he expect of you? Now go and take it. What I've given you freely, you have received. Freely give. It's, it's selfish. Oh God, I love to worship you. I love to love God. I love God. I love God. What are you doing? We share what we've received. If we saw one go with the measure that we meet, the measure that we give, it will be given back to us. Jesus. Most every miracle he did is preceded by compassion. What moved Jesus? 
compassion moved into action to do acts of mercy as a result of being so compassionate. He saw the multitudes and he was moved with compassion because they fainted. He had pain in his body, in his innermost being, when he saw the hurts and hopelessness of others and he felt sympathy for them. We read again in Matthew 14, 14, Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude again. He was moved with compassion. In Matthew 15 and 32, he called his disciples, I have compassion on the crowd. Who do you have compassion on today? Who do you see? What are you aware of? You can't do something about all of these situations and needs. No, you can't. But I believe there's something that God will move in you. And that's the key. We've all got different gifts and, and abilities and, and, and preferences, and that's what makes the body. But if we all do our part, faith of what needs can be met. Matthew chapter 20. Move with compassion again. Jesus touched their eyes. And they followed. There's a lot of people like this blind man that, 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 that are passing by crying out, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on me. We got to stop and give them the mercy that they're crying out. Luke chapter 10, verse 33. We know the story of the Samaritan as he journeyed and came to where Jesus was. By the way, I quit at 5 to 12 last week. So, quit looking at your watch. So, if you missed last Sunday, I'm sorry. This is make up something. Mike Harterbury, bless his heart, he overheard, uh, well, I believe it was Brother Eric, said, Pastor Randy, you get a whole hour next week. <laughs> Brother Mike overheard and said, that's just an extra 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. How many have come? I guess I have compassion on the crowd. Yeah, Lord, give me some. Are y'all praying for me to have compassion right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this is America. He was, and some people say, well, I'm not qualified, and, and maybe I don't meet the match, and that's just not my kind of team, you know, whatever. We make excuses after excuses. And this Samaritan was the least likely person to rescue this Jew. Amen. Boy, they were, there was animosity. The, the scripture says uh, that they, they despised each other. They certainly had no dealings with Samaritans, the Jews did not. So mostly there was hostility. But he helped a man that otherwise would not even have spoken to him. You understand what's happening? We know what happened, but I want you to see the Samaritan, how unlikely it was in the natural for this to occur. And sometimes we justify our inactivity because of whatever. I'm just here to tell you, there's no excuse. We see it in we have the goods. Look what he said. Verse 33 there in Luke 10. As they was going, the, the, the verse says, you look it up later on. But in your path. Who is in your path? Now this, this Jew that had been injured was in the path of the Samaritan. Well, there's lots of people in our path that are hurting and helpless and hopeless and and I'm going to talk about some ways, some, some activities, some ministry that's already going on. And all you got to do is just get in there and, and go to work. You don't have to start nothing. You can just be a support person and, and help them in the ministry that's already going on in our schools, in our community, and in the nearby area. And God may be going to your heart to start something. Everybody say amen. amen. But look, and then verse 33, he was in his path and he saw it. Now that's pretty easy. We see people in our path all the time, don't we? And now the rest of verse 32, he had compassion. Now that's another step. We see people in our path sometimes, but then we got to have compassion. I believe if we have the love of God, true love of God, he'll give us compassion for those needy in our path. Amen? And then verse 34 says, whoa. So he's in the path. He saw it, had compassion. 
Then he went to him. And the Levite and the priest went on the other side. We have a choice to make. We see people all the time. We know people. We see people. We work with people. We live with people. It's so easy to Sneak on by, act like we didn't see them. We ain't got time. Oh, we're doing this. <laughs> so, here the other day, this, this lady fell. Just about 10 feet off a ledge. She's walking, is it a mall or something? Is she just walking along here? Oh yeah. Oh yes. But he went to him. He, he was in his path. He saw him. He had compassion. He went to him and he took action. There's a whole sermon right there. Moving my life. <laughs> but God's going to put people in your path. There are people in your path. He just wants us to open our eyes and see. Remember the story there when the the. the the woman of every few was in their midst. And Jesus asked Peter, said, Do you see this woman? Well, people, people just talk to her. Do you see this woman? No, do you see this woman? And God wants us to see them in a holy way. See them through His eyes. Oh, we see them, but do you see this woman? And move us to action. Do what we can. And the, the, the compassionate story here. He got up and went to his father. And while the son was still off, the prodigal son was still a long way off. His father saw him and had compassion. Filled with compassion. And he ran. Again, he saw him. He filled with compassion. He ran to him. And he took action. Finally. I say finally. No, it's not over. I'm just reading the scripture, folks. Finally. Didn't change. Finally, all of you be. It may say all of you. Oh, this is inclusive. There's not one Christian that hears my voice or even one that's not hearing it that is exempt from doing good works in the name of God as a result of the love of God and the compassion of God. Amen. Nobody's exempt. I'll tell you, you don't love God if you're not helping other people. Amen. That's a strong statement. I believe that's the word of the Lord. Come on, brother. You should have your steel toe boots on this. Boy, the wrong shoes did. It. But this is this is all this is serious. The time of just coming to church to get an ear to tickle. But you better make me feel good today. Well, I hope I I'm convicted, been convicted all week. I hope you are too. I hope you leave here convicted by the Spirit of God. Not condemned. But realize if people are going to get Jesus, it's probably going to be because of you. All of you be like mine, sympathetic. Love one another. Wouldn't it be great if the church loved one another? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if we put our silly, petty, Stupid, ridiculous differences aside. You say, I love your brother. I love your sister. Just like you are. No, you ain't got to change for me to love you. That's not love. That's the man. Amen. Love, I love you. I love you. I love you just like you are. Be compassionate and humble. Now, the story of the Good Samaritan. Jesus said, now, now, 
It wasn't it was the priest. We know what he did. He went by the other side. The, the Levite went on the other side, didn't help him. And the, the Samaritan did. And so Jesus turned to the lawyer and said, Now, who was his neighbor? Which one of these was the neighbor of you person? Oh, of course, the Samaritan. Well, that was hard for a Jew to admit, wasn't it? Oh, it was the Samaritan. Who showed mercy? Having feelings is not enough. Compassion alone doesn't change it. That compassion of God, I believe, moves you through mercy to do something and alleviate the pain. And finally, Jesus said, Go and do likewise. That's my message to you. See him on your path. Let the compassion of God be filled with that compassion. And you go and do what you can. Read the story in Mark 2. It was the paralytic man that was left. And that's to me one of the most amazing, beautiful stories in the Bible. There's people in your path waiting for you to help. Them. Waiting for you. Cry out. For you to bring them to Jesus. Or bring Jesus to them. Compassion leads to miracles. Stand with me. Let's pray. Compassion leads to miracles. Oh, Jesus. The say that we love you. From a deaf ear. The pain and suffering. Church, I'm going to do everything I can to make you aware of opportunity. Needs, problems, situations, and also opportunities. We got to be in the church, amen. Yeah, there's there's a somewhat valid reason why people have quit coming to church. You know, I don't think that they should, but I understand what many of them have against the church. This bless me, club. Kind of come and make me feel good. Hypocrisy. There's several things. I believe that can change. That we can really represent him. And you'll never represent him more than when you're identified with the hurts and needs and pain and problems of other people. That's what Jesus did. He went about doing good. Oh, I pray in Jesus. God's going to put some things in our spirit. He's going to plant some things in there. Brother Jack said, we, we were pregnant with, with ideas, I believe. And not just idea, but God things that he's planted in there. This is what God's moving me to. Well, this is a need. It may be unlike anything. I mean, you know, but, but God's moving. I move with compassion. And I'm going to do what I can. We can't do everything. We can't change the whole world. But you can change something. You can. You can make a difference. I still want to get that t-shirt. You said I couldn't do it. Y'all pray for us. I think I, 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 I may get a t-shirt and say I'm mad. Don't do that. But it may be. I'm making a deal. We'll put that on there too. So uh, there's no reason to be mad. I mean, the anger of God doesn't even come to So I'm not angry. I'm M period, A period, D period. I'm mad. And on the back or something, I'm making a deal. Is that okay? Yeah. Come give me some. You like it? Yeah. You like it, Not really. <laughs>
Anyway, that's what God called us to do, church. Amen. Let's pray together. Would you do that? If you're here today and you're not committed to Jesus, boy, this is an invitation. Altars open. <laughs> Others are here to pray with you, to come to this loving Savior who died, shed His blood so that your sins could be forgiven. He loves you unconditionally. He's compassionate. He's full of mercy. And He says, come just as you are. And let me have control of your life. Father, we pray for anyone in this audience today that needs to do that. Surrender their life to Jesus. Commit themselves to this man of God who loved them. He gave himself. Anyone, just raise your hand this morning and say, pray for me, Pastor Mandy. I want to become a Christian. I want to renounce my sin. Jesus, give him claim and hold on my life. Surrender to him. Anybody has that need this morning? Now, church, I'm really serious. I really believe in God stir us to love and to good things. To do some things that I just, the Spirit of God is going to give you some really God ideas. Again, not trying to change the world, but, but to change something. Amen? Would you pray with me? Would you be open to do that? Hey God, here I am. You speak. Are you sure you want to pray that before, I, before we do it? This is not a, everybody pray this. No. Are you really serious about loving God? You know, we have a little a marquee sign out there, and I believe it's a God. He said, put it on there, a loving people serving a loving God. Only way we know if we're loving people, loving God is if we're loving others. That's the measure. There's no other greater measure. I don't care how you say, speak in tongues, take your blue in the face, whatever, whatever you do. And nothing wrong with speaking in tongues either. But I'm telling you, how do you treat other people? They are known we're Christians by what? Our love. Our love for one another. That's it, folks. And let's go fill with his love, fill with compassion, and do acts of mercy and kindness to a hopeless Curry world. Amen. Brother Mark, dismiss us in prayer, my brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for who you are in our life. It doesn't matter what you give us, God, you are more than worthy of yes. our praise, of our worship, yes. of our service. We pray, Lord, that as we go, point out the things that you would have us do. Help us to be obedient. Yes, Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. I thank you for your patience this morning and being here. I want you to pray for Joyce. Joyce has got a busy week this uh, week. She's feeling a little under the weather this morning, and she's got a big day ahead of her and lots of things to do. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you for Joyce. Oh, God. I thank yes, you for her willingness to pray. Supernatural strength. Lord, and I ask you in Jesus' yes. name.